Well, good morning. Christ is risen. Glory to God in the highest. It's great to see all of you. Uh, as I'm looking out into the sanctuary, I feel I sense a spirit of joy and celebration in this room, which is very apropos for this occasion. So happy Easter to all of you. Very, very good to see you. Uh, our regular Rosedale family, as well as guests and friends of Rosedale. So God bless you all, and welcome to those who are joining us virtually. We're glad that you are able to be here with us as well. Today we are celebrating Holy Communion. So glad that uh, we can all be here together and gather at the Lord's table. Uh, if you want to turn with me to your announcements briefly, one of our younger folks, uh, Julian uh, Guillot, is having a craft sale uh, next Sunday between noon and 3 p.m. Uh, he is a budding artist. I didn't know people that age can have a work art studio, but he does. And uh, uh, all of us are invited uh, to come. And the address is there at Studio Moy, Mo Moy at the 926 Kingston Road. And it'd be great to have some of us there. So that's next Sunday, April 7th. Uh, as well, next Sunday, April 7th, we'll be having a baptism for Mr. Rusty Schuster. And that's that little gentleman sitting over there. So we look forward to that. And the Schuster family uh, will be joined by some of their family, from uh, visiting family from the U.S. So it's going to be an exciting time. And we're looking very, very forward to that. Uh, the Sunday after, on April 14th, we'll be having a guest from the Presbyterian World Service and Development Committee. Uh, so the PWSD Committee has meetings uh, about twice a year, I believe. Uh, and so they'll be having a meeting here in Toronto. And we have invited one of the members, uh, and she is Mpakso Ngunwe Chikwasa. And she was our host when I was in Malawi. Esther and I were in Malawi. So it will be about five years uh, since we haven't seen her. So she will be coming here as our guest and be giving a presentation uh, on the church in Malawi. Similar to what we had for Evangel Hall, the Evangel Hall presentation. So at coffee hour, uh, you are all welcome to stay and uh, the presentation will be done at that time. Uh, we've announced, uh, we've announced uh, a couple of weeks ago, for a couple of weeks, the ministry teams. Uh, we've been having a, a, quite a good response from the congregation. So if you are uh, considering helping and volunteering in one or more of the teams, uh, please speak with me, the clerk, or any one of the elders. And we would be more than happy to include you in one or more of the teams. And also, uh, we have our next Messy Church on Saturday, April 20th. Is that correct? I believe that's correct. Saturday, April 20th. Yes, Saturday, April 20th. Uh, so that's coming up in, in just a few weeks. And if you have any questions about that, uh, please speak with our new CE Director, Kenneth Kim. The rest of the announcements are there as well. Oh, one more, one more item to note. The Easter flowers. What a beautiful arrangement. Uh, so these, are, these have been donated by several of you in the congregation in honor and in memory of loved ones. Uh, so we'll have a, a time of acknowledging them as well. And all those names are listed. Let's now come together as God's people as we celebrate the risen Lord today. Our opening hymn is 255, Now Let the Vault of Heaven Resound.
Thank you. Let us pray together. Blessed are you, O God, full of faithfulness and steadfast love. We gather in celebration of the resurrection life we have been given through your Son, Jesus Christ. Open our eyes to recognize your presence here among us. Open our hearts to the love that you have for us. Open our minds to the truth you would reveal to us. All glory and praise to you, triune God, now and forevermore. Amen. Please be seated. Let us now with a sincere heart and a humble voice seek the forgiveness of God.
Are you ready to come down? How are you today? I just have to come get something. Good morning. Who can tell me what we're celebrating today? Easter. Easter. Good job. And Easter is that time of the year when we think and reflect back on the life of Jesus. Before we start, I have a glass of water here. Who can help me describe this glass of water? It's half full. Is there another way to think about it? No? Okay. <laughs> That's right. It could also be half empty or it could just be a glass of water. It's clear. There are lots of ways to think about this glass of water. Now. Now how would we describe it? It's empty. It's a glass of drops. It's a glass of drops. It's clear. It's still clear. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah, it's kind of a little bit of more. It's a little bit more. Okay. There are lots of different ways to think about this. And everybody's going to think about it a little bit differently. And that's kind of like the story of Easter. Many people think about it differently. Many years ago, we started thinking about the life of Jesus. And many years ago, Mary, after Christ was crucified, went to his tomb and found the stone that covered his tomb rolled away. And she saw the tomb was empty. And she went and found other people and brought Peter and John back to look at it. And Peter looked at the tomb and he was curious. What happened? He had no idea what to think as he looked into the tomb and he saw that the shroud that Christ had been buried in was folded and where he, the body had laid. And Mary looked at the empty tomb and she saw it was empty and she was sad because all she could think about was the body of Christ was missing. No. Yeah? That tomb was empty. It was empty. And then John went and he looked at the tomb, and he believed. The Bible told us that John believed that Christ had risen, that he had lived up to his word, and he had risen. He instantly believed. Three people looked at the empty tomb, and they all thought about it differently. And I think, today, when we think about Easter, that's how all of us think about it. We all think about it differently. Some of us are curious about the life of Christ. Some of us are a little sad. And some of us just believe that he has risen. Join me now in prayer. Okay? Yeah. Dear Lord, today is Easter and we are reflecting back on your life. Some of us are curious, no. some of us are sad, no. and some of us believe. No. Yeah, the Easter Bunny hit is Easter eggs. Today, as we think about that empty tomb, Lord, guide us all to come to a point where we can believe that Christ is risen. Amen.
means saying the prayer for illumination is printed in your bulletin. Spirit of resurrecting truth, grow away any assumptions that block our understanding of the Easter story. Open our minds and hearts to receive the good news that Christ is risen indeed. Change our lives with this gift. Amen. The Old Testament reading is taken from Isaiah, chapter 25, verses 6 through 9. On this mountain the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained to clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the covering that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, See, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> the response of Psalm printed in your bulletin is Psalm 118. You know. 
confirm the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, and God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord.
reading is John 20, verses 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went to the tomb. The tomb, the two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying where the linen wrappings but rolled up in a face by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuna, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not touch me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Mr. God. Then number 249, the day of resurrection.
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. We have gathered this morning according to God's promise, the gift of new life, a resurrection life. This is our celebration this Easter morning. On Easter morning, 2018, a mother, 40-year-old Sharon Dobbins in Arizona, got up and was planning to attend church for Easter service. She was very excited to go to church that particular morning. She was even more excited to take her 16-year-old son with her to church. The only problem is he wasn't as excited as she was getting up early Sunday morning. After repeatedly telling him to wake up, to get ready for church, he just wouldn't budge. So, in her overzealousness and possibly irritation, she did what few, if any, parents would do. She took a taser stun gun, uh, and since he wasn't waking up on its own, she thought she would help him along. So yeah, she, she takes him. This incident was reported by Phoenix ABC affiliate KNXD, so this is for real, I'm not making this up. So as mom tased her son, she told him, get up, it's Jesus day. Of course, the son was jolted out of bed, and not surprisingly, they got into a bad fight. And he yelled, Mom, I'm calling the police. To which she said, You can call the police, DPS, UPS, I don't care, but you need to be with Jesus right now. Well, he did call the police. Phoenix police arrived. They arrested Ms. Dobbins. She spent 12 hours in jail on Easter morning, on, on Easter day. She was charged, for the interest of the lawyers here, she was charged with one count of child abuse with intent to cause harm. Even after all that, she told the Can XB reporter. I don't think I did anything wrong because you're supposed to put God first. And that's all I was trying to do, is tell my kids to put God first. Anyone here go through that this morning? <laughs> you all got up nicely and presently, that's good. In a way, Mary herself was jolted on Easter morning. But it wasn't this kind of negative experience. In John's Gospel, she was the one who first encountered the risen Jesus. She came to the tomb early that morning to see Jesus. The same Jesus who showed her God's love. Perhaps for the first time in her life. And it changed her profoundly. She longed to see that same familiar Jesus again. She saw that the tomb was empty. She ran and got Peter and John, and they all came back to the tomb and saw the same thing. At least for John, it led him to believe. And perhaps with Peter too. In any case, they both returned to their homes. But Mary stayed. She stayed, hurting, weeping, longing for Jesus. Her security has been shattered. Jesus is gone. She doesn't know where she is, and now she's left all alone. And then she receives her jolt. 
Jesus appears to Mary. She doesn't recognize him at first, but he speaks her name in that familiar and loving way that she's come to know so well. Mary. And she's startled because she's seeing Jesus again. And she cries out, Rabbi, teacher. She recognizes him. Jesus is right there. She knows this Jesus. She can still be with him, she thinks, in that familiar way. In the way that she's comfortable with. And she holds on. She holds on to that familiarity, that safety. She clings to that old, familiar relationship. But then Jesus says to her, don't hold on to me. Now, usually we get the sense, we have the image that when Mary recognizes Jesus, she starts to approach him. We've seen it in the movies. And Jesus reaches out his hand and says, don't touch me. And that's not accurate at all. What's happening here, and the grammar is very, very clear, she's clinging to him. She's already holding on to him. And Jesus says, stop holding on. Stop doing what you are doing. Stop. Don't hold on to me. Let go of that old relationship. Because I have not yet ascended to the Father. This must be fulfilled. But go and tell others. And tell them that I am ascending to my Father and your Father. To my God and your God. Easter's theme is predicated on the empty tomb. It represents Jesus dying and rising anew. Easter tells us emphatically that newness happens once the old is left behind. Once it's let go. That new life arises from death having been overcome. In my Easter email message that you received recently, I shared a story of a friend who struggled profoundly with deep resentment and anger towards his absentee father for his neglect, his abuse, and selfishness that damaged the family terribly. Complicated story. But eventually, my friend, who had no spiritual or religious inclination at the time, he hit a personal rock bottom in his life. His anger had just overwhelmed and overtaken him. He had to travel a long, hard road of deep, serious transformation so that he could be released from his anger eating away at his soul. But not only did he let go of his hate, but he himself tasted the forgiveness of God. And he experienced a total change of heart. This is probably one of, if not the most profound turnaround stories of a life that I've ever witnessed firsthand. He let go of his anger. He shed his hatred. He left behind his resentment. And we all know how difficult forgiveness is. And there's much more to the story, so I don't want to romanticize what happened at all. But this was possible after having embraced God's love in his life. And he accepted it as a 
calling to share this love with others. He wanted to make a difference in the world. He experienced a resurrection of spirit. He went to the cross. He went through the cross and the tomb of hate and death. And he emerged on the other side of the cross. We too live on this other side of the cross. Having gone through death, having left behind all that needs to be left behind, we're called to do what the disciples were told to do by Mary. Recognize this resurrected Christ and go and tell of the complete work of God. To believe it, to live it, to embody it, and proclaim it. Ignace Jan Paderewski was an internationally famed Polish concert pianist and composer. It was his custom to practice on the piano for several hours every morning, even while on a concert tour. On one particular tour in New York City, he got up in the morning in his hotel suite and he began to play the piano, as was his daily habit. A woman in the room across the hall called the manager's office to complain about the noise. She told the manager, some nitwit across the hall is banging on the piano. Tell him to stop. The manager said, Madam, I'm afraid I can't do that. You see, that nitwit is Ignace Paderewski, likely the greatest pianist in the world. He's preparing for a concert tonight. So I can't very well ask him to stop. Woman said, Is that really Paderewski? I've never seen him. I said, Yes, madam, that's really him. The woman said, Look, of course you can't ask him to stop. Then I'll just open my door so I can hear him better. <laughs> Even though we're hearing or seeing something clearly, sometimes we don't recognize it as being other than meaningless noise. We see the cross. We see Jesus' death and sacrifice for the world. But do we recognize God's gift of redemption? God's gift of forgiveness and transformation for us in the resurrected Christ. Has what we have witnessed with our eyes of our hearts moved us, caused us to truly follow in Christ's way, the way of transformed love, hope, compassion, kindness, service. Because of Easter, the fearful disciples of Christ became the force God used to plant the Christian church. Because of Easter, Paul was turned from a persecutor of Christians to his greatest evangelist. Because of Easter, the early church became a community of believers that never felt alone, lonely, or abandoned because everyone cared for each other's needs. Because of Easter, the message of the crucified and risen Christ blazed across the continents, infecting those who heard it with faith, hope, and joy. Because of Easter, faith abounded and still abounds today. In this season of rebirth, 
May you feel your faith renewed and your heart made new with the hope and joy that Easter brings. This is our new promise. All thanks and glory be to our God. Amen. Let's pray this prayer of Easter. Lord Jesus, we greet you, risen from the dead, proving that nothing can separate us from God's love, showing us how far that love will go. Lord Jesus, we greet you, and we pray to you, and through you. We pray with joy and confidence as your Easter people. Amen. Easter Day celebrates God's most precious gift to us in Christ's dying and his rising. As we present our gifts this morning, may our generosity reflect God's goodness to us and the hope we have in Christ Jesus, our risen Lord. We invite the generous offering this day so that we may continue the ministry of Jesus as his host. Easter people. We get now.
Jesus Christ. Amen.
sing of our praise and joy this day, loving God. Your resurrection grants us a new spirit and vision of gratitude for all those we love, both past and present. We lift up your people's prayers that honor the memory of loved ones who live on in our hearts. We pray on behalf of Dorothy Brawl in honor of her family and friends. Susan Kaplan and Mark Mathaway in honor of their grandparents. Esther Cho in honor of Chong Tae Kim. Nick Gorham in honor of Jimmy Hood, Ken Craigie and Miss Dorothy Scott. Margo Hines in honor of mom and dad. Alexander Johnston, in honor of Jeffrey Dean Johnston, Alexandra Johnston, and Agnes Dungal. Tony and Pat Keith, in honor of their parents. Michelle Miller Guillaume, in honor of Marjorie Miller. John and Joyce Moffat, in honor of David Moffat. Sue and Peter Shaw, in honor of Marion and Evan Bay, Gerda and Milos Mladenovic, Brian and Shaw, Jim and Kathy Spence, in honor of George and Ruth Spence, Jill Soar, in honor of Judy Soar, Sheila Tate, in honor of Margaret, Joanne, and Michael, Mar Tour, in honor of Professor Donald Ainsley. Elizabeth Thompson Walters, in honor of the Reverend Dr. Stanley Walters. James Weavers, in honor of Grace and John Weavers. We are blessed by the gift that they all are to us. Therefore, we proclaim this mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Bless these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be for us Christ's body and blood, offering us life anew. As this bread and wine become a part of us, make us a part of Christ. Dare us to live for justice and joy, trusting that all things will work together for good through the power of the love that raised Jesus from the dead and the love we share in your name as we pray, as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. On the night before he died, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and blessing, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, this is my body, broken for you, take and eat. And whenever you do this, remember me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood. Take and drink, and whenever you do this, remember me. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, let us, as post-Easter people, remember Christ. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Taste and see the grace eternal. Taste and see that God is good.
the body of Christ broken for you. Love Christ shed for you. Let us now share in prayer together. Living God. 
Your Son made Himself known to His disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see Him in all His redeeming work. By your Easter promise, you open to every race and nation the way of life eternal, that every tongue may tell of your glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Let's close with our final hymn, Jesus Christ has risen today in the third and first fourth verses. Thank you.